We're going to conclude a Maimah from Parshas Achrimais and then learn the beginning of a Maimah of Kadoshim, Daf Chavtes, page 29. So now the, the Maimah of Achrimais was discussing the meaning of Yom Kippur, or Abtai Skimel. The idea of Yom Kippur, which is a day of repentance and a day of forgiveness, where what we we did wrong, our mistakes are forgiven because of the introduction of a godly light beyond where the rules come from, and therefore it's able to forgive our uh, our having gone against the rules. In other words, uh, uh, it's on Yom Kippur, or in so if Hashem's unlimited light is revealed, which can uh, forgive. And this Aaron safe is beyond both Makif, the surrounding light, and Panimi, the internalized light. Now, when we learn Torah, so we have Hashem's wisdom in our brains. That's internalized. Mitzvahs are actualizing Hashem's desires, what Hashem wants. And therefore, that's Makif. Makif means something that surrounds us. That's like the mitzvahs, they surround us. And and desire surrounds us in the sense that it's not something that is based on reasoning. It's just this is what I want, and that's it. So it's beyond reason, and in that way, also a makif. Now, within the body, uh, we compare panimi, what what is internalized to the mind, and makif, the what surrounds and is beyond to the skull. So spiritually, also there's uh, corresponding levels of moicha, the arich of the mind of arich. Arich is uh, uh, the is uh, the external part of keser uh, beyond hishalshlos, and then the skull, and that is uh, the uh, godly light that is uh, elicited through Torah and mitzvahs through Torah the supernal mind and through mitzvahs the, sup the supernal skull but on Yom Kippur th there there's a revelation of beyond of Atik which is the inner part of Keser and, and that is pure unlimited godliness and that's beyond uh, what what is called the skull or Keser uh, the, the the external part of Keser which is Arich um, so basically, we, without using Kabbalistic terminology, that on Yom Kippur, it's, it's a day which is totally beyond, we, we connect Hashem beyond the rules and beyond the regular systems, and that's why uh, atonement is possible. Now, what is even deeper inside a person than what he wants? Pleasure. Pleasure is where, the, and when we talk about pleasure, we mean a, a deep in. Uh, inner pleasure, which is not just his having something nice, but his whole self feels uh, at ease and com uh, at ease and complete. And that, so that's the time of pleasure beyond rot and beyond desire. And similarly with Hashem, the inner part of Kesar is is uh, is uh, linked to uh, pleasure. And that feels all blemishes that might be from the market, the surrounding levels, and for me, the uh, internal, internalized levels. And that's why it says in Gemara that where the Baal Shiva stands, a, even a completely righteous person can't stand uh, because the Baal Shiva that, that connects to, to Atik, to, to the inner part of Keser, Hashem's unlimited light, beyond anything else. Now, in, in Zayar, it actually says that who returns? Who does Shiva? Uh, Atik. That uh, Shiva is connected to Atik. And therefore in Yom Kippur, uh, so the, where the, the service that Veda is done through the Kain Gadol, and the Kain Gadol is bringing down this light of Hashem from beyond, which uh, is what the Pasuk alludes to when it says that Bad Kodesh Yoba, she wears uh, this uh, white linen. The idea of white is, is simplicity, that it's not a, a level that you could describe, but it's this uh, essence, which is beyond, beyond description. And uh, similarly here, that it refers to the essential pleasure from one's uh, inner, inner essence being uh, complete and whole. And... 
So the Kain Gadol wears the white linen on Yom Kippur to represent this idea of, uh, of essential pleasure, uh, which is uh, beyond pleasure, which is, uh, which is uh, lower and limited into uh, Chachma, into wisdom, that, that uh, pleasure is from beyond the shashlas, beyond the chain of worlds. When it comes into to the spheres, the first of which is Chachma, then it's limited. And like, and uh, th this is like with a person that he can either have pleasure from something outside of himself, for example, from learning a new idea or from tasting a, a delicious food. But then you have essential pleasure, which is just an inner pleasure and feeling complete. But even uh, essential pleasure can then be contracted and, and lowered down into Chachma. And therefore, when the Kohen God wore the, uh, the linen garments in Yom Kippur, so it was uh, pure and wa pure white, uh, which represents this, uh, that it's the simple, essential pleasure. Uh, and it hasn't descended down into any specific form or into any specific sphere. Now, the... But the white linen is uh, linked to the, uh, the it says about Avram that when he purchased Maris Machbela, he, he paid 400 uh, shekel over uh, uh, the, uh, the, the coins that would be uh, good for a businessman that they could, you could spend it any, they would be accepted in any region. So, but what does it mean spiritually? Seicher means to surround. To go in a circle, so that represents makiv surrounding the, the light of Hashem, which surrounds worlds. It's beyond worlds and surround, but it surrounds worlds. And over means even beyond that to pass beyond beyond the makiv light, which is where we reach on Yom Kippur with Aaron Seif itself, uh, the, the inner part of uh, Kesar, which is uh, uh, Atik, which is uh, a matter compared to uh, pleasure. Essential pleasure. So clothes in general, makifim, they surround the person. And then we introduce this bad, the white linen, which is beyond makif, uh, into the garments. And then that is what is able to fix up all blemishes. And uh, therefore, in Yom Kippur, we keep on saying, Vayavar. Uh, that I should, uh, Vayava, the, which is the beginning of the Yud Gimel Menes Arachim, Vayava Shem Aponov, which the, the idea of Vayava is also to pass beyond, to get even beyond uh, Soviv, Tashem himself. Now, the Pasuk says about Yom Kippur that it will, that on this day, Yechapra Lechem Hashem will atone for you. The tares him to purify you. So we have here uh, a few steps. So first of all, uh, Hashem will atone for us, and that is uh, from the. We could have either a a, pro, a makiv problem, for example, uh, uh, under you uh, too much uh, care for uh, honor and how people respect uh, oneself, and then that has to be pushed aside. That's like uh, the machisika uh, b'shecha that the b'shem the the deeper sins have to just be wiped away, and then we have the pnimim the internal um, aspects of klipa. For example, enjoying uh, wine or enjoying uh, meat, so that when you eat uh, wine or drink me uh, eat meat or drink wine, so that becomes part of the the uh, energy of the body, and then you can actually use it out for holy purposes. And, and if we use it out for holy purposes, then it doesn't have to be destroyed. It's just being purified. And that's the meaning of Lifnei Hashem Titaro, that in front of Hashem, and that from all your sins, you, you can become purified. And that's with the inter, inner um, uh, aspects, like uh, being too focused on, in, on indulgence in, in the food, and that can be still used out for holiness.
So with carbonus, you also have these two aspects. They would sprinkle the blood on the mizbech and they would burn the uh, the uh, fats. So now these fats are not normally allowed to be eaten. But the fire that would come down on the, on the mizbech would still burn it. So that is the parts that are able, that are able to be refined. Then we have the sprinkling of the blood, which which uh, represents uh, kavura severity, and uh, that uh, destroys what can't be refined. And uh, so, therefore, we have both. We uh, we want to uh, transform and elevate what can be refined, and then uh, get rid of what can't be refined. And therefore, it just says on that day, Yechaper, he will atone. It doesn't give a name for Hashem because it's Hashem as he is beyond names, Hashem's unlimited light. And uh, that's the meaning of Mima Mak and Karasich, that we call out to Hashem from the depths uh, that we want to connect Hashem as he is beyond worlds. Final paragraph, or the Tesis sphere. So to explain further about this, uh, Godly light, which is beyond both Makif and Panimbi, beyond both the surrounding light and the internal light. So, the whole concept of filling worlds or surrounding worlds only makes sense once you have Kalium, once you have containers. That And that's what differentiates between the Makif and the Panimbi. But if we get beyond, uh, beyond the Kaylee and beyond where there's containers, so then uh, we can't even talk about our Panimbi and our Maka for inner, uh, internal light and the surrounding light. Now in Oziyashir, it says uh, that uh, I'll sing to Hashem is because Hashem is exceedingly great. Uh, so in other words, uh, so great that it can't be held by Kaylee so that is uh, Sovev. But even though it's Sovev, it's still Sovev, it's beyond worlds, but it's still surrounding worlds. Whereas Aaron Sovev itself, it's not just uh, that it's, uh, beyond, it's uh, uh, beyond uh, the regular rules of, world, of, of worlds, but still having a connection. Rather, it's totally beyond. And uh, when, similarly, when, when we say in Davening, that atahu Hashem levatecha, that you are Hashem alone. That means that Hashem is beyond being, even being be, being sober. That's also, also the meaning of Hashem badad yanchenu. That Hashem, um, you know, when we say in the uh, in the uh, v'zay sabracha, uh, sorry in uh, hazino, that Hashem badad yanchenu, and um, it's again Hashem alone being totally beyond worlds. Both Panimi or Makiv, and that was the where the Kohen Gadol was connecting to, was tapping into on Yom Kippur, and therefore he was wears this pure, pure white. And although the on Yom Kippur, the Kohen Gadol enters into the Holy of Holies, into the Kodesh Kadashim, which Kodesh Kadashim represents beyond even Sovet. Sovet is Kodesh, but Kodesh Kadashim is beyond even that. So, uh, so, so through the kind uh, going in and reaching that level, so, th uh, so that fixes up all blemishes that there may be in whether in uh, Makif or in Pnimi, whether uh, the, the Hashem's surrounding light that we uh, elicit through mitzvahs, or Hashem's internal light that we elicit through Torah. This concludes the Mimer and gives us a great perspective on how special Yom Kippur is. It's the one day which, uh, where we connect Hashem as he is totally beyond the world, or in Sof, and Hashem, which is Hashem as he is alone. Now we'll continue with the next Maimur Kadosh. Asif says, When you come into the land, on the Tartan, you should plant all trees that give uh, f f fruit. And then for the first three years, the fruit is Arla, you can't eat it. And then in the fourth year, the fruit may only be eaten in your Shalai. Now, 
the uh, measure says that who wet who I wish someone could uh, wipe off the dust from Adam Arisham's eyes from uh, uh, Adam's uh, the first man's eyes and he'll see that he couldn't wait for three hours to, to eat the fruit whereas now we do the midst of waiting three years before eating the fruit of the tree. So this medrash is a proof to the opinion of the shach in his commentary on the Torah that he says that the midst of Arla is a tikkun is a rectification for the sin of Etadas. That uh, that uh, there also it says that the the uh, tree was good to eat. Ate, ate, uh, the the and here also he uses the same expression ate uh, a tree for food, and Adam was commanded in the ninth hour, and already in the tenth hour he transgressed. If he would have waited till the end of the day, till Shabbos, so then all the fruit would become holy, and that's like what happens in the fourth year where the fruit becomes holy. And uh, that's what the Medrash means. Your children, Adam, they wait for three years, meaning that that's how they fix up the sin of Adam and Chava with the tree of knowledge. Now, in the fourth year, all the fruit is uh, holy. It says, um, Now, this word, you know, so what, what did they do? They would eat in Yerushalayim. The word hilulim means that it's uh, that it, you, you take it there to, to eat in Yerushalayim with praise for Hashem, with thanks and thanksgiving for Hashem for giving us this fruit. Now, you take it specifically to Yerushalayim. The Pasuk in Tehillim says about Yerushalayim that Sheshem Shvatim, that's where the tribes went, Lahedes L'Shem Havai, to praise Hashem. So what's this idea of praise and, and, and thanksgiving? What's the meaning of it? Hashem has everything, and Hashem is totally beyond. So what do we add to Hashem by praising Him? Seemingly, the best response would be that the best response would be silence. Because how can we even imagine that we are we are able to fathom Hashem and we're able to uh, to praise Hashem? Why should what we say uh, make Hashem feel better, so to speak? So the idea is. And it explains the, the, the answer elsewhere based on the Pasuk, the Atta Kodesh, Yeshev Telis Yisrael. It says, we say to Hashem, you are holy and you sit. You're sustained by the Telis Yisrael, by the praise of the Jewish people. What is, what's the meaning of this Pasuk? Well, Hashem is really totally beyond, uh, beyond creation of worlds. And uh, the whole creation is only from what we call a name. Na when, when do we use a name? Only when there's an other. So the name represents, it's not the essence, but it's something that represents that uh, uh, represents you. So similarly with Hashem, the name, it's not the essence. And that um, Hashem only relates to the world with, with his name. Over the page, that... Uh, all the everything that Hashem creates is only from His name, and like uh, because a person wouldn't need a name for himself. That's just uh, for interaction with others. And uh, Hashem Himself, like it says in Pasuk is love me call in midas eel cloud. Hashem is not really from any of these midas. So, uh, so then. Uh, if because Hashem is totally beyond, so how do you then uh, bring Hashem to use that midah if it's totally beyond that midah? So it's like similar to a uh, someone who's angry, he's furious, and you want the person to do an act of, act of kindness. So first you talk about how this person is a kind person, you praise his kindness, and then that brings out that kindness. So similarly with Hashem, it's not because of the anger, has Hashem, or any negative middle, but it's just Hashem is totally beyond. And only when we talk about it, that reveals that godly quality. Uh, and uh, so normally it's very concealed. 
and we but but now when we, when it's needed so we praise that quality and it's similar to when we say in a bracha we say Baruch Hashem bless the you Hashem uh, that so when we call Hashem names that relate to different qualities that's how we bring up Hashem which is really totally beyond any quality and bring it down into that specific quality and uh for example, when we say Baruch Hashem, so then we uh, praise Hashem as the uh, as uh, with the name Havaya, that which is the name of Hashem as is uh, the Creator. So then we we reveal that quality and, and bring down Hashem as is uh, the Creator uh, to put everything into existence to be Mahava everything. This this is the meaning of the pasuk that we quoted before Vata Kodesh Yeshiv to Yisrael, that um, Hashem, you are holy, you uh, sit upon the praise of Israel, meaning that Hashem is really holy. Holy means separated and beyond. But how do you sit? Meaning how do you lower, draw down your light to us within the world? Uh, that is uh, that happens through the praise of the Jewish people. That when we praise Hashem. We reveal that quality that was concealed until now. That's why halo, which means praise, also uh, the, that same word can mean also to shine, like the positive Baal uh, that, uh, And that's because when you praise someone with a certain quality, you make that quality within them shine. Now, we said that Yerushalayim is the city where everyone gathers to praise Hashem. And this applies both to the, it applies to the physical Yerushalayim, but especially to the spiritual Yerushalayim. And this is the meaning of when we, when the, we say, Baruch Hashem min elam vada elam, we want to bring down from Alma Diskasya, the hidden world, to Alma Diskasya, the, the revealed world. Uh, and uh, so this, this is the idea uh, of of the of the pasuk saying that when when we have fruit, then it is It's holy and it's a praise for Hashem. Meaning that the fruit it's that uh, Hashem for Himself is really kodesh, is really beyond any quality and any praise. And then Hilulu in this praise is only to bring down and to reveal reveal uh, Hashem's light within a particular quality. Okay, base. Now, what does this three year and then fourth year represent? So, ba based on Zoyar, so this is about uh, Hashem and Knesset Yisrael coming together, and this is like a marriage. And the Ramaz says that the first three years is uh, uh, relates to the three uh, lower spheres of Nehi, Netzach HaYisayid, which are uh, the spheres about actioning the feelings. The first is three spheres, the, uh, which are the intellectual perspective, and the next three spheres are the emotional feeling. And then there's the action, the what you do based on the feeling is the next three, Nehi. And then Malchus is what receives it all and, 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 makes, it, and makes it practical. So now so the first three years in the here, and then the fourth year is higher it's from Tiferes. And Tiferes, which means beauty, that's where you have praise. And actually, the name is related because, like, Lafar is to praise. The Sherish, Pei Alafresh, relates to praise. So now, uh, why do we say that the first three years you're not allowed to eat the fruit if they're related to the lowest spheres of Nahi? It's still holy. It's maybe a lower level of holiness than the highest spheres, but it's still holy. So why should it be? Uh, why should it be uh, forbidden to eat the first three years? So we can explain based on a statement of the Pardes that the first three years is the Gimel Klippus Atmeus, the three impure Clippers, and then the fourth year is Clippus Naga. So then it makes sense. The first three years are totally forbidden. They're from the Clipper. They can't be elevated. But the Ramaz said before that the, the first three years correspond to Nahi. 
side. So if that's the case, then it's still holy. So, so why is it totally forbidden to eat? So to answer, we'll first talk about uh, we'll first introduce other ideas from Hasidus and Kabbalah and then come back to the question. So now, we said that uh, Malchus, which is uh, speech, is uh, and, and uh, bringing down the practical from all the feelings, the emotion, the ideas, the feelings, and then Nahi, which is about bringing the feelings to, to, towards uh, action, and then Malchus is the actual action. So now, so malchus, which is speech and action. So speech is called the feminine because it receives the feelings uh, of the midas and then it expresses them in words. Therefore, the makabal, the recipient that receives from the mashbiya, from the giver, which is the, 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 the giver is considered a masculine energy, the recipient of feminine energy, like the Pasuk says, Zachar Chaste, literally he remembers his kindness, but it also means Zachar Chaste, that kindness is from the masculine side. Uh, in this, And in this, what we mean is that the uh, highest spheres in general come from uh, uh, masculine in the fact that they're guiding uh, the recipient in, in how to behave. And then the recipient is considered feminine. Now, we find a paradox that on one hand, when you speak, you're revealing your emotions. On the other hand, if the emotion is too powerful, then you can't speak. And that's the specialty of the shofar over to the final column, uh, that the shofar is just this simple sound, and that represents a cry from the inner heart that can't be expressed in words. On the other hand, when you say something with words, so it's only superficial, it's only the external of the emotion, now, uh, voice and sounds, we said that the, the cult nimi is the shaper and the, the external, more external curl is speech. So uh, curl uh, is, uh, inclu- uh, rep- is uh, represented by age, mayim, ruach, fire, water, and air. It's fire, water, air, and earth, the four elements. And the first three, age, mayim, ruach, correspond to uh, uh, sound and, and voice. By the way, it's interesting that they are Rosh Tevis um, uh, Aleph Memresh, Amar is what she means to speak. Anyway, so now, so the world of speech is considered the feminine world compared to the Midas uh, because uh, in, in our words, we, are, we have mostly the external part of the emotions, only a little bit from the internal. Now, we know that uh, the world exists because of Hashem's speech, that uh, Hashem says the, said that let there be light, let there be different a- elements of the world, and that's how the, they exist. Uh, because it wasn't just a one-time creation, but every moment Hashem is recreating it again. Like we say in the Shayyach ben Munna in Tanya, Perak Beis. So... When Hashem speaks and those words uh, create something physical, so then th- that means Hashem's word- speech has to be very limited in order to uh, relate to physical uh, uh, life. On the other hand, the emotions themselves are higher. And that's because the mid- the um, the uh, speech only receives from the middest through a uh, partition it only receives external of the midas and 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 therefore when we we speak our five parts of the mouth and which give out five different types of sound there's the palate the lips etc the throat and that's because malchus is limited now there's a cryptic uh, statement in idrabba which is uh, further expanded in a time of the Arizal, that Nekeva, feminine, comes from the word Nekev, hey. Nekev is a whole, and then hey is uh, uh, five. 
which is the five uh, parts of speech, you know, as we speak from the lips, from the, the, from the throat and from different parts of the mouth. And uh, they, the uh, different part, uh, parts of the mouth, which make different sounds. So that all receives through Nekev. Nekev is a whole which represents limited light. Now, so originally speech is only receiving from uh, underneath the emotions. The emotions are the, are the whole uh, content of the words you're saying, and then the words just come at the end. But then there's a higher level where the where malchus, which is speech, and the midas, the emotions, are not one on top of each other, but facing each other, and that's like the union of male and female. That yes, the feminine has the power to nurture within, as opposed to masculine, which is uh, to uh, to to try to dictate from above. But then when they unite, so then the speech the, receives not only from the external of the emotions, but they unite in an internal, internalized way. Now, within speech, there's different types of speech. Some speech is ex only external matters. Then other speech can be deep ideas. So similarly with Hashem's, so we have the 10 utterances with which he created the world, let there be light, let there be a sky, etc. And then we have the Ten Commandments of Sarah Sadibris, which is the Torah. So the uh, Asara Mamaras is just to bring uh, from us from nothing to something to have a world. And uh, that's and and that's only uh, related to the lower mid midas of Nehi and to Chayyusay. Whereas the Sarasa Dibris, the Ten Commandments, that comes from Hashem's inner wisdom and inner will. And there Hashem is, uh, reve is revealed, Hashem's light is revealed without blockages. And, and it relates to Tiferes, which is, means uh, beauty. It's the middle sphere and it's above Nahi. And uh, so this uh this uh unification where uh where uh, where the feminine and masculine come together this unification of uh masculine and feminine is 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 the unification of Tiferes with malchus now the purpose of all of creation is for Hashem's presence to be revealed down here there are many sources for this. It says that everything Hashem created, he created for his uh, glory and that his presence should be revealed down here. Like it says, Atares that you showed us so we should know that Hashem is the, the real God. Ain't known about it. There's nothing but Hashem. And it says that the purpose of the plagues was for Egypt to recognize that Hashem is the real God. This is also the conclusion of Pirkei Yavis. The, uh, where where it says it, it says that everything's created for Hashem's glory and Hashem rules eternally. Now the Medrash says that the purpose of creation is because Hashem desired a dwelling place in the lower world, a dira b'tachtainim, and that is a place where the creations uh, can uh, Hashem can uh, do kindness to the creations giving them uh, 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 energy and enlivening them and then they will recognize Hash and Hashem's greatness and this is connected to Tiferes that we should see uh, the the beauty and the glory of Hashem and this will be ultimately achieved with Mashiach, where it says that then Hashem's uh, glory will be revealed and we'll all see Hashem. And over the page, the top of the uh, Lamed. And uh, so, so, so when, when uh, Tiferes uh, comes together uh, uh, with, with Malchus, so that's the unification that we're aiming for. And uh, that, that's the idea of revealing Hashem's uh, 
presence in Malchus in the which is the lower worlds. And this happens through, like we said before, when you praise a certain quality, so then you reveal it, even in a place below it where it naturally is. And I was going to praise Hashem for a certain quality that reveals that quality, although Hashem is really beyond that quality. And this is the idea of Tiferes, uh, revealing the, the beauty of that uh, quality. And uh, so this is uh, what we're what we're trying to achieve with the um, the uh, uh, Arlan and the fourth year. So we have the first three years where, uh, which correspond to either uh, the three, the Gimel Klippus Atmeis, the three and few uh, Clippers that we, we want nothing to do with. And then the fourth one is what we can fix up. And that's why we're eating rich lime. Or that the first three are the lower midas Nahi. And then the, the fourth year is Tiferes, which um, which links Malchus, um, the godliness involved in worlds with uh, a uh, more powerful um, uh, the, the godliness of Tiferes rather than the lower spheres. Okay, so um, uh, somewhat uh, somewhat uh, kabbalistical uh, this uh, mimer, uh, but. Uh, one thing we do have is that through praise of, of qualities, both with Hashem and with people, we bring out that, that, those qualities. And, and that idea of bringing out these qualities through praise is the unification of Tiferes, where you praise qualities with uh, Malchus.